Now, let's go straight to my friend and colleague, Stephen Jiang, at the British School in Beijing, San Li Chun. Stephen. Thanks, Christy. I am here uh, in one of the city's leading international schools. They have a very diverse student population, these 10, 11 old uh, students coming from some 15 different countries. But for most of them, there seems to be one thing in common, that is they are uh, city kids, but already they're learning even in sprawling metropolises like Beijing. It has more than just uh, bustling city streets, but also farms, rivers, and mountains with a lot of biodiversity, right, Daniel? This is, uh, what is this? Uh, so this is a map of Beijing now, and we have been making imagination for drawing some uh, wildlife corridors such as bridges and tunnels for connecting the, connecting the edge of Beijing, which is the mountains, to the center of the Beijing, m making it more biodiverse and for the animals to travel more safely. Yeah, that looks really great. You know, for these kids, it's really not much of a debate when it comes to climate challenges because for many of them, they've already experienced the negative impact of climate change, like flooding in a historically dry city like Beijing. And I think they're trying to show it here, right? Sora, what is this? Um, this is a this is our work that we have been making in humanities, and this is a 3D models of a settlement in a in a coastal region. Yeah. As you can see, the city is very prone to flooding since it has not developed any flood defenses. Right, and I think uh, he's trying to flood it <laughs> as, we, uh, as we are live on air. But, you know, these kids are not just focusing on the present, but the future, uh, using the latest technologies, trying to uh, really find potential solutions. Right, Sunny? Uh, yes. So what is this? We wrote reports about what we think the city in the future would be like. Also, we used AI technology to help visualize the city in the future. This includes rooftop farms and green walls. Very reassuring. You know, these, all of these projects and activities are reassuring because despite the uh, alarming trends, some of them illustrate these kids are not only very much aware of the problem, they're immersing themselves in the process of uh, trying to potentially resolving these problems and taking their future into their own hands. So on that very encouraging note, let's uh, go to what looks like a very cold soul where my colleague Paula Hancock is. Paula? <laughs>